quick summary of this entire development. Uh, axial line or central line or whichever, um, our axis, and an incoming ray at distance delta x from the axial ray and uh, parallel to it. <coughs> this angle, <coughs> excuse me, this angle is theta sub i, and the angle of refraction be theta sub r. We're going to use, uh, we're going to assume delta x is significantly smaller than r, small enough that we can use small angle approximations, and we'll see what those are. Okay, so that uh, for, for the small angle approximation, if delta x is much less than r, then theta sub i is approximately equal to delta x over r, and that's the angle that would be in radians. Uh, the sine of theta sub r over the sine of theta sub i should equal 1 over n, where n is the index of refraction, so that uh, sine of theta sub r is going to be sine of theta sub i divided by n, and I should probably put a line in here, which means that um, since sine of theta sub r and sine of theta sub i uh, for small angle approximation are equal to theta sub r and theta sub i, they're very close to equal to theta sub r and theta sub i. We have theta sub r is approximately equal to theta sub i divided by n. Theta sub i is delta x over r, so theta sub i over n is delta x over n times r. So we have an expression for the refracted angle theta sub r. It follows that the line of the refracted ray is going to make an angle with the line of the original ray of theta sub i minus theta sub r. So here we have the angle theta sub i minus theta sub r, and that's going to give us uh, the distance that the ray has traveled closer to the axis. Now, if theta sub i, uh, if delta x is small, then um, the distance from here to here is very close to the diameter or twice the radius of the circle. That should be very clear. The closer delta x gets to the axis, the closer uh, this distance gets to 2r. So using approximations again, um, this distance here is going to be approximately what? Well, we got 2r here, and we have, uh, we're trying to find this side of a right triangle. So we're going to multiply this distance, 2r, by the sine of this angle. Now, actually, we won't be multiplying this distance by the sine. We're going to multiply it by the tangent of the angle. Uh, but the sine and the tangent are practically equal for small angles, and uh, we could have used the tangent. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this distance here is also very close to 2r, so we're okay in using the sine. It doesn't really make any difference. Uh, sine of theta sub i minus theta sub r is just theta sub i minus theta sub r, small angle approximation. And uh, what's theta sub i? Theta sub i is just um, delta x over r here and theta sub r is delta x over nr. We factor out the delta x over r. The r is going to divide the r here after we factor it out. So we're going to end up with 2 delta x times 1 minus 1 over n. Now we'll note that for water, where n is 1.33, which is very close to 4 thirds, 1 minus 1 over n, 1 minus 1 over 4 thirds is 1 minus 3 fourths, which is 1 fourth. So we have 1 half delta x here approximately for water. <coughs> so for water, um, the ray will move twice as close to the axis, assuming again a small delta x. You get out here into larger delta x's, uh, it doesn't hold anymore. Now what we ultimately want to find, in addition to where this ray hits the back of the lens, we want to find the angle of incidence as the ray hits the back of the lens before being refracted on. So uh, we're going to call this angle theta sub i prime, the incident, the second incident angle, the angle at which the refracted ray is incident on the back of the lens. And uh, this picture is getting a little cluttered, so we go up here and make another cluttered picture. Okay, uh, here we have the uh, theta sub i. Um, and this is our delta x here. So we're just reproducing <coughs> this picture, but without this orange triangle. 
Uh, we have the angle theta sub r. That's this angle here. Uh, this angle here is equal to this angle. I think we just said it. These are corresponding angles of a transversal of two parallels. So we have uh, angle theta sub i here. Um, we have angle theta sub r here. And uh, we have an angle over here. Okay, so let's figure out what that angle is. Well, that angle is the angle we get, and I'm calling that angle alpha. It's just a dummy uh, name for the angle. We're going to uh, not have it in our final um, expression. Uh, but uh, remember, we have distance here of um, 2 delta x times 1 minus 1 over m. Okay, that's this. Well, if that distance is 2x, et cetera, et cetera, then this angle alpha is going to be that distance divided by r. So we divide that distance by r. We get this expression, which we rearrange, taking the delta x and the r out here. And now we have 2 times 1 minus n times delta x over r. The delta x over r is just our incident angle of the original, uh, our original incident angle. Okay, theta sub i, not theta sub i prime. So that's 2 times 1 minus n times theta sub i. And I'll note that for water, where the index of refraction is 1.33, uh, approximately 4 thirds, that alpha is approximately 1 half theta sub i. Okay, so now we get theta sub i prime. How do we get theta sub i prime? Well, we know now we have an expression for theta. Well, we, theta sub i is delta x over r. Alpha is uh, 2 times 1 minus 1 over n theta sub i. Um, and we have a straight angle here. So this obtuse angle in the triangle is equal to pi radians minus theta sub i minus alpha. Okay, it's going to be this minus this minus this. Or 180 degrees minus, um, if, if theta sub i is 14 degrees, 14 degrees minus alpha. If it's water, uh, it's going to be half of that or 7 degrees. But in general, this is the angle. So now we have theta sub i prime um, is going to be 180 degrees, or pi radians, minus this, minus this. So theta sub i prime is what? It's uh, pi, 180 degrees, minus theta sub r, minus this angle, which is pi minus theta sub i minus alpha. The pi's go away, and now we have alpha plus theta sub i minus theta sub r. Very simple. So theta sub i prime is equal to this. But of course, alpha can be expressed in terms of theta sub i. So we get theta sub i prime, alpha plus theta sub i minus theta sub r. Uh, we plug in the 2 times 1 minus 1 over n theta sub i for alpha. And theta sub r is theta sub i over n. Uh, we can factor theta sub i out of these. We get theta sub i times 1 minus 1 over n. And uh, we have here theta sub i times 1 minus 1 over n times 2, but here we have 2 of them, here we have 1 of them, so we get 3 of them. 3 times 1 minus 1 over n theta sub i. So there's the solution uh, for the incident angle in terms of an arbitrary index of refraction. Now, I'll note that if n gets big enough, if it's, uh, I, I think, more than about 1 and 2 thirds, um, Maybe, maybe two. I'm not, I'm not going to think through that right now. Gets too big. This uh, ray is going to refract to the other side of the axis. Okay, so you know we have to think a little bit about what that would mean. But for reasonable indices of refraction, for indices of refraction of most materials, uh, this works just fine. Now that gives us our angle of incidence on the back of the lens. Now we have to do another refraction from. Um, index of refraction n out to index of refraction 1. Uh, assuming uh, throughout, I don't know if I said that at the beginning, but assuming throughout that we have air on the outside and some other material on the inside. 